Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video today, very quickly, to talk about the pre-release summon banner, which is what I'm going to be talking about today. Let's get into it, huh? This is a banner that likely a lot of people are going to end up being skipped. It's going to be skipped. <laughs> it's, that's just the, the cold, hard fact of the world. This banner is going to be skipped, but I wanted to talk about the four units on it, so let's get into it. So, first of all... Let's very quickly go over the two four stars, which are the actual limiteds of the game, uh, of the banner, I should say. <laughs> Funny enough, Drake and Nemo, not limited. But Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed, Archer, and Calamity Jane, they are limited. So, just to very quickly go over them, Calamity Jane um, is a very interesting unit. It's a unit that I can have never been able to actually figure out the right way of using. But maybe it's because I'm just not... The smartest when it comes to this kind of unit. She has a sabotage here, which is her first skill. The second skill here, which is a reduce all enemies' MP gauge by one, and a party charge, but at an 80% chance of actually it being. Well, no, it has an 80% chance of increasing party attack, and an increase to her own attack, um, which is just 20% to both. And then there's this third uh, skill, which increases one ally's buff success rate for three turns. And then if, depending on the number of crit stars, at 10, uh, they get crit damage. At 20, they get crit absorption. At 30, they get an evade. At 40, they get ignore invincibility. And at 50, it charges their NP gauge. And this is selectable to anyone. It can be given to her. It can be given to the ally. It's whoever. And I feel like a lot of her kit breaks down to being taking advantage of this, I think. And then she has her passive skill, which is magic resistance C, writing A, present concealment A, independent action A+. Plus. And third skill is an anti-foreigner attack damage aptitude. Um, in a ranked noble phantasm is a ignore evasion for one turn, deal damage to an enemy. Five hits quick, single target, um, deals uh, 12,000 damage at level one and 2,000 at level five. It also reduces their defense for two turns and also reduces their quick resistance for two turns. So just 10%, 10%, and then 30%, 30% at final overcharge. And yeah, that's her unit. Um, I've never been able to properly use her, but I, I, I'm not the smartest when it comes to units like this where it's like looking for the right team for them. I actually had to go looking around and see like, hey, because I actually recorded another version of this video where I feel like I was very down on a lot of the units, so I feel like I had to go look at someone else saying something else. And people were saying like, yeah, this is a, a unit that's pretty good, but probably not on the upper echelons of good. At least that's what I was able to find, and at that point I was like, okay, maybe she's just not a unit for me. But if she's a unit for you, she's gonna be on here and like I said she is limited so unless you want to use your four star limited ticket on her um, it's gonna be a little bit tough to get her next here's a unit I know because I pulled these back when they first released uh, and Bonnie and Mary read the summer version and the last time I talked about these units I got it wrong that they were limited because I got confused with the writer version that was not summer but I'm not wrong about this both of these versions are bad <laughs> Uh, she has uh, Beach Flower A+, which is an increase of party attack and male uh, ally star, crit star generation, which is 19.5% and 41% male. The reason these numbers are funky looking is because it's a year one unit, so all of them have that. This is a buff they get later on in the Learning with Manga um, campaign, pre-release campaign, because there are characters in Learning with Manga who want to get buffed. Um, but they have a uh, treasure hunt ocean, and this is an increase to critical star absorption for one turn. Charges their MP gauge against crit stars, which is 15, 30% MP, and 600% absorption. Before this, it was just simply 600% absorption and 15 stars. Third skill is a guts, which is not stackable, but it is permanent in terms of until permanent amount of turns until she dies, basically, or it gets removed. An increase to attack and a reducing of um, own debuff resistance by 50%, which is a demerit, <laughs> which is not good. 25.5% um, attack up as well, which is, uh, okay. Passive skill, magic resistance D, independent action A, and this is their noble phantasm, which is the Caribbean Freebird, which it deals damage to one enemy. It is Buster. It further deals damage to them based on own remaining HP. Additional damage formula equals to 600% one of current HP. So if they're at one HP, they get 600% damage up on top of whatever they're doing. Their MP damage is not very good. It's 600% at level one, and then it's uh, all the way at the end, it's 1,000. 
It reduces their defense for three turns as an overcharge, which is 10%, and then all the way at the end is 30%. And because they are Buster, I should mention their cooldowns are 5, 5, 6, 6, and 5. Um, this unit is just not very good. Uh, that's the the easiest way to explain it. Um, Hijikata was a, a lot in a lot of ways very similar until he got enough buffs to make him work. This third skill, the guts is nice, but the demerit seems unnecessary. <laughs> what is this unit doing that warrants them taking a depot resistance by fifty percent for three turns? <laughs> What is so broken about this unit that that, need, that needs to happen? They just need a little bit more buffs before they're probably a usable unit. Probably to the third skill and to their Noble Phantasm just so they can do a little bit more damage. And yeah, that's basically it. I have them. I use them over occasionally over times and I can attest they're not very good. I try though. Next, let's talk about the two five stars. One is limited and the, and the both of them are not limited. So you can get them at any time. Let's start with Drake. Drake has Voyager of the Star. Uh, she is a um, writer. She has one quick, two arts, two buster. Her first skill is Voyager of the Storm A+. Increases party and MP damage for one turn and increases party's attack for one turn. 17% and 17%. Not very good. It's bad. This is for one turn only. That's not very good. Even if it is on a five turn cooldown and she is a buster unit and you will get this back at the end. Still not very good, I would say. Second skill, which gets, uh, which has been buffed, is the Golden Rule of Running Through A. Increases own MP generation rate for three turns, increases Buster performance for three turns, and then grants self ignore defense for three turns. 45% NP and Buster is up by 20%, which is something she needed for a long time. Third skill, Pioneers of the Star EX, which is a charge to our MP gauge, ignores invincibility for three turns and gains crit stars, 50%, cooldown of six, and this is also a cooldown of six. Uh, passive skills are Magic Resistance D and Writing B. Her third skill is an Anti-Archer Attack Damage Aptitude, increases own attack against archers. And then her Noble Phantasm, which is rank A+, is a 5-hit buster, deals damage to all enemies, 400% damage at level 1. At level 5, it's 600%, and then you gain some crit stars. At level 1, it is 20, and at the final charge, it is 40. And that's Drake. Um, I'm... This is weird because I think I had to look this up because when I originally recorded this video, I was very down on Drake. I love Drake, but maybe that's because of my love. I was being blinded and apparently a decent amount of people think that she's actually good as she is right now. And to be fair, she is. She can be used with uh, Buster Looping thanks to Pioneer of the Stars. Um, and, and being on a six turn cooldown. So with a Morgan setup, it is possible to use her and be good about it. I still think that um, some of her kit is just a little bit too old. Like, for example, this being a, a rank-up Noble Phantasm, all it did was increase damage slightly. That's not really that great, uh, in my opinion, at least. But maybe it's a thing of, like, maybe they don't want to give her too much. I don't know. I'm, again, like I said, I'm a big fan of Drake. When I used Drake in the early beginning, she really helped me a lot. And I also really like her from Extra. I played extra just for. I love when she says like, "Damn," when she when. Uh, oh, I don't want to spoil extra because there's a new game coming out, so I won't say anything more. But the point is, is I really like Drake. Um, for the longest time, I didn't think her unit was very good, and even when I've tried using her with Morgan, I just feel like she's not living up to what a lot of other Buster Loopers can do. But I guess if you're someone who's looking specifically for, if you don't have the generic, like, hey, I'm Buster and I can hit anyone like Arjuna Altar or Morgan, and you just need someone that is like, I need someone that can kill casters and I need them to do it well, I guess Drake will be there for you and she could do enough damage and it's not gonna matter too much about the Voyager of the Storm only being here for a single turn. Though I don't know why this is for a single turn. I feel like this should be three turns. Or if it's only for one turn, I, I just feel like there's so many like buffs that last for a single turn that give so much. But I guess for 17, if you add it up, 17% twice is a 34% um, um, attack up for a single turn when it comes to NP. Is that enough? I don't know. Tell me how you feel. But I've always felt like a Drake just needed a little bit more because she just feels like kind of like a generic beat stick but maybe there's nothing wrong with being a generic beat stick and like i said she does work with um um Koyan skaya so that's definitely points in her so maybe i was just underestimating her let me know i'm very curious about this but i really do like drake i feel like she can be better but for a lot of people it looks like she's just 
she works just perfectly enough with Koyan Skaya and she gets hard carried by having a 50% NP up that it just is good enough for her to be in the current state of the meta and considering there's not a lot of like writer buster options like the other Iskandar is in a much worse place and I also love Iskandar. Iskandar doesn't have a NP gauge up at all I think and he needs one so at least let me be sure about that one because I'm pretty positive last I checked he did not have one but he might have gotten one um and if he did, I don't think it was 50%. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have one. And yeah, that really sucks. Like here, increase Buster performance for one turn, but it's 50%. Increases party attack for three turns, 20%. That's not good either. This is pretty good. Increases party's MP damage for three turns and increased crit damage for three turns. 20% for three turns, and she's getting 17% for one turn. I don't know. That's how I feel. Let's move on. Tell me how you feel. I would actually be kind of curious to hear what other people say. Nemo, I can tell you this from right here. I don't need. To, I just need to look at one skill. Voyager of the Storm Sea increases party's MP damage for one turn, twelve percent. Increases party's attack for one turn, twelve percent. And then the thirty, the one that's twenty percent is tied to Waterside Void Space Battlefield, and he has a lot of skills like this, <laughs> where Waterside, uh, Waterside or Void Space Battlefield is what actually makes him better. And it, it really hampers him. He has a guts that that is tied to his MP, a MP gauge that's tied to his guts, which is not great. Um, and yeah, I'd like you. This is all great if you're fighting Waterside. And yeah, I can say this one. Nemo, I really like Nemo. I wish I had Nemo. Oh, he's just not very good. Um, he can probably because he is arts, and there's enough like. If you really wanted to be desperate with it, you could just ca double cast Storia and Oberon for the final thing. There are ways to work with Nemo and to get him to work for you. Three hits on a Noble Phantasm for Arts is, is just enough to be able to loop, I think. At least Da Vinci um, Lily is able to do that, so in theory he should be able to too, but I actually don't know. But yeah, he's he's not very good. He needs a lot of buffs or a way to make it so that Waterside and the other one always show up when he's there. He does have a very fancy uh, costume, though. That's a nice costume. That's a shame. I really like Nemo, but he's definitely the weaker of the two, uh, which, is, like I said, is a really damn shame. And that's his banner, basically. Uh, they also have a bunch of CEs, which are related to Summer, which are really nice arts on CEs, but good luck trying to get any of these when they're all being featured at the same time. Good luck. And, yeah, that's basically the video. Should you be summoning on this? No, don't summon on this. Unless you're just a huge, big-ass fan of Drake, Nemo, and Bonnie Mary Reed or Calamity Jane, there is no reason to be summoning on this when Summer is on the horizon. When we got Summer Banner 1, which features the new Summer units, and then you got, you know, Summer Banner 2 has Achilles in it, which is not... Which is also not good, but when you go past that one, you get Summer 3, which has Summer Comma in it. <clears throat> and then past that, you have Doman in it, and Columbus, um, though Columbus is not very good. He is limited, and a three-star, and he would be, um, in theory, easier to get, but to be fair to me, it's a demerit to have Columbus on your banner. Um, that's my own personal hang-ups, though. Um, there's no reason to summon on this banner. For Drake and Nemo are on every single banner, so there's always a chance for them to spook you. It's always a really weird to summon for a... a uh, very rarely do p uh, units that are always on banners get their own banner because there's really no point because they will randomly spook you and then you just get a five star but i can also understand the want of being like well i'm never gonna have th this is my one chance of like actually going for more mp copies for my drake so i'm gonna go for it and for those kind of people dream big go big i love you go for it i wish you the best of luck but for everyone else no need to summon on this. Really, there's literally no reason to summon on this. And that's today's video, everyone. It's out a little bit later than usual. But again, I really did feel like that other video was just slightly too negative. So I had to hold it back. This one's a little bit easier. Also, my cat was just randomly like meowing in the background <laughs> for a lot of it. So I had to re-record it. It was also like 30 minutes long, which is way too long for these four units. I spent more time talking about these four units than I did the good summer units. So... <laughs> That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching until the end. If you do, remember to leave a like, comment. Uh, it helps out the channel and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.